I begin to speak to you this morning about an encounter I had with the Lord in February of, this month of February has always been kind of unique for me. February 96 is when I started in the full-time ministry. You know, February is when I got married. You know, February has just been kind of a, a unique uh, month for me for some reason, but um, it was in the month of February 2011, um, you know, based on a word of the Lord, you know, when the Lord spoke to me, he said, this is going to be a year of revelation, 2010, and those who live by information in these final days are not going to be able to make it, but only those who live by revelation are going to make it and overcome, and so that's the key. We have to be led by revelation, not information, okay? So the, the world has been telling us that we're in the age of information, especially, you know, digital age. Information coming to you just like that, you know. Little tweets and text messages. I mean, you know, in, so much information is available and so much information is out there. But if we don't understand how to discern by the Spirit of Truth, the Holy Ghost, then, you know, we really won't know which side is up. And, you know, we're in a time where evil is called good and good is called evil. And people have lost all sense of discernment because they have been duped, they have been deceived. And uh, so, and they say it's the age of information. I tell you, no, it's the age of revelation. Revelation was available before information that came through the dig digital age. You know, when the sum total of all the information, listen to this, the sum total of all the information someone ever received in their entire lifetime in the time of Jesus could be put in a newspaper today. And just imagine just your regular daily newspaper. The sum total of all the news and information people got in the time of Jesus could be put in, a, in one newspaper. <laughs> just, you know. and today we're bombarded with information. Absolutely bombarded 24-7. You know, from every direction, all kinds of directions. So the, the key is now then to understand that we have to Walk by revelation, not information. Amen? So my journey started in that month of February 2011. I was woken up in the middle of the night by the Lord, and I heard the audible voice of the Lord speak to me, saying, money changers. I was fasting and praying. I shut off all information, and I said, Lord, I got to hear from you. Um, the Arab spring, spring was breaking out in the Middle East. I was in Istanbul, Turkey, and then... All hell was breaking loose on every side, and crazy things were happening, and I needed to hear from the Lord. I got on my face. I said, I'm just going to shut off all information, and I'm just going to make sure that I hear from the Lord. I hear from the Lord. Amen. And so money changers, the Lord spoke to me, and um, then I, it started me on a journey to begin to study. If you would go with me to Matthew chapter 21, verse 12. Matthew chapter 21, verse 12. Then Jesus went into the temple of God and drove out all those who bought and sold in the temple. Everyone say, bought and sold. Okay. Now that right there should be, uh, that's very telling. Because the world system operates on buying and selling. But God's kingdom operates on sowing and reaping. Okay. And overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. And he said to them, it is written, my house shall be called the house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. So right there we see that this whole courtyard is full of people that are just thieves. Do you understand me? And right after that, then the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them. Look at this. I mean, he's... This is supposed to be a place of healing, but it's, it's become a place of merchandising. But when the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things that he did and the children crying out in the temple saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant, <laughs> angry. And I want you to understand that the priests and the scribes, the Pharisees, they're not just religious leaders. They're also political leaders of the time. So you have to understand the combination of what's going on there. And they said to him, do you, do you hear what these are saying? And Jesus said to them, Yes, have you never read out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants you perfected praise? Then he left them and went out of the city to Bethany and lodged there. And we know that right after that they plotted to, to, to kill him. Then go to John chapter 2. 
Gospel of John chapter 2. It's pretty much in the beginning of the Gospel of John because the Gospel of John pretty much covers the last week of Jesus before the crucifixion. And in verse 13, now the Passover of the Jews was at hand and Jesus went up to Jerusalem and he found in the temple those who sold oxen and sheep and doves and the money changers. Everyone say money changers. Doesn't mean much to us today, right? We don't ever use that terminology. We have a, a new terminology. We call them bankers. Okay, so bankers. That's what it is. They were the bankers. Okay. Doing business. They definitely were not doing the father's business. Jesus said, I'm about my father's business. These people are about their father, their father's business, the devil. Remember, he said to them, you know, you're of your father, the devil. These people are of their father, the devil. When he had made a whip of cords, he drove them out of the temple with the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changers' money, overturned the tables. And that is, that is symbolic of him overturning of a system. And actually, it says from that day forward, they could not operate there any longer. It got to the point they could not operate there any longer. And that area actually became where the early church was meeting, by the way. Remember, they went up to the temple in the hour of prayer every day. So he, cl he cleared that area, and the church was established. The first church was established in the very place that he cleared out from the money changers. Powerful. Amen. And he said to those who sold the, sold the doves, take these things away. Do not make my father's house a house of merchandise. What is it to be? A house of what? Prayer. What is, what is the highest form of prayer? Worship is the highest form of prayer. And his disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house has eaten me up. So the Jews answered to him and said, what sign do you show us since you do these things? He answered and said to them, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it, up, raise it up. And the Jews said, it has taken 46 years to build this temple, and you will raise it up in three days. But of course, he was speaking of the temple of his body. Therefore, when he had risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this to them, and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said. So now remember, verse 13, this was the Passover of the Jews. At any time... During the Passover, you'd have anywhere from half a million, anywhere from 500,000 to six, seven, 800,000 Jews that would be basically merging and gathering in Jerusalem because it was the time of the Passover. That's what they were supposed to do. They were all supposed to come to Jerusalem at this time. So this is great opportunity. I mean, you got, you got thousands of people coming. And the Lord led me on a study. He said, I want you to study the whole banking system. I want you to study the entire money system, and I'm going to show you everything you're looking for and all the answers that you're looking for in the geopolitical system, because I knew a lot of different things, bits and pieces, but it seemed like there was a missing piece. Well, the missing piece was the money. Money tied it all together. And we know that the Bible tells us that the love of money is the root of all evil. So all evil that we are dealing with in the world, all evil, if Bible says all, it means all all evil that we see in the world is tied to the love of money. It's all rooted in the love of money. So, and actually, even in crime investigations, they say, follow the money trail. You'll, you'll get to the root. And we are dealing with criminal elements in the world system. Who is the ruler of the world system? Satan, Lucifer, is the ruler of the world system. He's the god of this world, the world system. So there are structures that have been established in this world system. And it's like an octopus, the tentacles of an octopus. It's got many tentacles that's wrapped around this world. you got the money system, the banking system. you got the, the governmental system, the one world government. And you've got invisible forces behind the world government. We have so-called elected officials. By the way, let me just tell you something. We need to stop. Okay, like people in Congress, do you understand me? They're not our leaders. They're our representatives. They're elected to represent us, not to lead us. We are the leaders. The people in America are the leaders. That's what a republic is. America is not a democracy. It is a republic. It's for the people, by the people. We are 
in charge of this nation. That's how the founding fathers established this. In, in a republic, the rights of the individual are more important than the voice of the majority. Do you understand me? That's why we are, a, we are able to meet here today when in other nations they cannot. They have been shut down because they don't have the Bill of Rights of the Constitution like we have. The freedom of assembly and freedom of worship. Do you understand me? In other nations, police can come in, force people out of the church, say you cannot meet. And it's, that's it. They cannot do this, that in this nation. Even when the governor signs an executive order to close down essential businesses. This is not a business. And this is very essential, by the way. The house of the Lord is essential. It is essential that we meet and we get the essential oil of the anointing of the Holy Ghost on us, smeared on us in these meetings. The only time a church should shut down is at the rapture. The only time I will not show up is if, is if I have been raptured. And so if you show up and the place is empty, there's nobody, you might have missed the rapture. So you better be ready. Hallelujah. You better get all the oil you can now, the essential oil you need for the final days, so that you're not numbered among the five foolish virgins, but you're numbered among the five wise. And be ready and be prepared because a dark hour is at hand. It's already upon us. And any moment now, we might hear the shout and the trumpet sound. And we'll be called up yonder to meet the Lord in the air, in the clouds. Glory to God. <laughs> and the Bible says that we, might, we should comfort one another with these words. Why? Because the comforter lives on the inside of us. And we have words of comfort. We are not appointed unto wrath. We, are not, we have not been given a spirit of fear, but we've been given a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. Amen. We are not defeated. We are victorious. We are more than conquerors in Jesus Christ in all these things because he loves us. And perfect love casts out all fear. And the love of God compels us. We do everything out of love. We are a blessed people. Hallelujah. We are appointed. We are anointed. We are called with a high calling of God. Hallelujah. And so we are not to back down. And so... This is one of the things that we need to understand. So people are calling me saying, there's a law that the churches cannot meet. There is no such law. People don't know what they're talking about. No one can make that law. No one can make a law to forbid freedom of worship and freedom of assembly. It is, it is against the Constitution of the United States. You have to understand that. So people don't even know what they're talking about. You know why? Because they just they have no idea. Because the American people have been dumbed down by... The things that they've been taught and they don't understand and here i am here i am a naturalized citizen i had to read the constitution and you know i have to take an oath to defend the constitution of the united states because i'm a naturalized citizen so is my wife my entire family is do you understand me but my daughter now she was born as a citizen she never had to do that she was a citizen the day she was born but I had to actually read the Constitution of the United States and take an exam. So you all Americans who've been born here, you need to read the Constitution of the United States and understand because that is the supreme law of the land. And then there is a supreme law of the universe, which is the Bible, the word of God, because God has exalted his word above his name. And if Jesus has been given the name, which is above every name, hallelujah, then all authority in heaven and earth has been given unto him. Hallelujah. I mean, that is the greatest and highest name. And right under that, as far as the governing rule of the land, the law of the land, we have the Constitution of the United States. Hallelujah. And it was prepared by the founding fathers. It is a great document. And they've been trying to destroy it and discredit it, saying that it's some archaic document that it should be done away with. Absolutely not. Do you understand me now? Okay, so these money changers of the time of Jesus, these were the bankers. Now, what you need to understand is with the current system we have, the banks actually create money, not governments. People don't understand that. I've spoken to people about it. They didn't even understand it. They think that the government creates money. No, banks create money. And what we have today is a banking system 
And I was talking about the different tentacles. You know, one of them is the, the money system. The other one is the governmental system. Then we have the media. Then we have the entertainment, music, movies, Hollywood, which is a cesspool of demonic filth. And then it's run by Luciferian occult worshipers who do things you could not even imagine. That would, that would make you want to vomit, actually, if you, if you really knew what they do in their secret cults and secret societies. If you knew the things that they do, you would, you would not even be able to handle it. And you'd wonder how they can do these things and, and have absolutely no feeling about it because they have seared consciences. They actually have no conscience. They've been taken over by a reprobate mind and demonic forces, and they're ruled by demons. And we know that our battle is not against flesh and blood, principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, wicked spiritual wickedness in high places. So that's what's behind these people. But they know who they're serving. They're not just regular sinners that are just deceived, don't know what they're doing. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. It's not that kind of people. They, they know what they're doing. They know that they are serving Lucifer. They know it. They know it. In the high levels of the occult, they know exactly who they're serving. They know who their God is. And they have sworn an allegiance to the Luciferian agenda to serve their master, their father, the devil, and to establish a kingdom for him here on earth. Because that's where this is leading to a one world government, one world money system, and a one world religion. And that's one thing we have to be very careful about. Because I had, you know, it, I've had to deal with this for many, many years especially in Turkey and Europe, this whole ecumenical movement to bringing all the religions together, you know. Let's hold hands and sing Kumbaya, we are the world, you know. And, uh, and then we have this thing that's been propagated for many years here in America called Chrislam, trying to merge Christianity and Islam. And I come from Islam, so I know what Islam is. There is absolutely no point of merging or agreement. It's impossible. You cannot... It, it, it's not the same God. Okay, so the God of Islam is not the God of the Christian Bible. It is not. Okay? And I've done some teachings on that in the past. Maybe we'll, I'll resurrect some of that again here. Because you got all, there's, we got a lot of people that have never, never seen that, heard that. But um, So what we're dealing with is this money system. And the money changers of the time of Jesus were the ones that created and controlled a certain type of money called the shekel of the sanctuary, the temple coins, the silver shekel. And it, had, it was a special coin that had a special inscription on it. And it was the only coin that could be used in the temple. And that's why they had set up shop in the temple. And everybody that had to come there had to change their money. Whatever type of money they had. Remember now, back in those days, they didn't have paper money with numbers on them. So everything was by weight. Gold and silver and precious things was by weight. So they would weigh it, and shekel is actually a weight. And then they would weigh the money that you would bring, and they would exchange it for you. Do you understand me? They would exchange it for you. They would weigh the money. They would exchange it. And, um, and then, they, of course, they figured out that if they could work together, they could monopolize and manipulate the market however they wanted to do. They could push it as far as it could bear. People had no choice, you know. One day it's a certain rate, the next day it's whatever the rate they set. And then people had no choice but to go with the rate because that's what the shekel, they determined the value. And then, of course, they sh always were shaving off the top. And then they had also established a taxation you would say, well, why would anybody want that money? Well, if it's the only way to pay the certain tax, it's, if it's the only way to, certain, to buy and, and sell there in Jerusalem, then you have to have it. Do you understand me? When it's established as legal tender, that's the only one you can use. Go with me to Matthew 17, verse 24. So Jesus' over, overturning of these tables represents him overturning of a system. 
And the Lord spoke to me 10 years ago, and he said, I will step in one more time before the final days, and I will shake the system of the world, and I will overturn that system, and I will shake the money system, and the wealth of the wicked that is laid up for the righteous will come into the hands of the righteous in the shaking. See, it's in times of shaking and chaos. That's when wealth transfer takes place. Why do you think, oh, what, is, what do you think is going on with the coronavirus? Is it really about a virus? No, it goes beyond the virus. It's a power grab. It's a money grab. They are grabbing more power. See, power is being taken away from people. People cannot even, in Italy and Turkey now, people cannot even leave their house. They go on the streets. They are getting arrested. In certain nations now, they're stamping people. In, in Denmark, they started chipping people. They're forcing people to take a vaccination, and they have to take a chip to prove that they've been vaccinated. That's what gives them the freedom to travel now. It is being marked. If you, you have to be marked to play by their rules. That is the mark of the beast. Beast in prophetic language represents a system. Mark means you're marked also by marking somebody takes ownership. We know who has ownership by the mark. Do you understand me? Branding is another word. People like wearing brand name stuff, you know, Gucci, and, and they got the and then Louis Vuitton, and, and they're fake Lees, and, and, and just stuff is fake. Most of it is just fake. Everything's fake now. Fake Rolex, fake watches, fake this, fake that. I mean, man, I can take you to a market in Istanbul. You can get almost anything fake, and they almost cannot tell the difference, you know. By the way, you're just paying for the name anyways. They're all made in China. <laughs> all made in China. You're just paying for the name. The, the bag is worth 10 bucks. The brand name was worth 10,000. So you're paying 10,000, 10 bucks. You're paying 10,000 for the name Gucci. I mean, it, you know, it's a scam, guys. It really is a scam. So, you know. So many scams. And that's what I, what, what I begin to discover, all the scams. There are so many there's scams in the food industry. There's scams in the drug industry, the pharmaceutical industry. There are scams out, my Lord, the whole political system. There's scams there. There's scams in the media. It's all about, it's a big giant scam about scamming people. And that's what the money changers were doing. They were scamming people in the house of God. And it, they were in the court of the Gentiles. That's where the Gentiles were allowed to come, and they were supposed to be presented the gospel of the kingdom. And they, they were supposed to walk in to the courtyard and see the kingdom of God, except they walk in, they see the kingdom of mammon. Greed, the money-driven system, the root of all evil, full of thieves, worshipers of the devil, basically. So they were actually presented the devil instead of God in the courtyard. That's why Jesus walked in. That's why he was so angry. He literally just started whipping them and overturning their money changers' tables and just throwing everything into chaos. I mean, he really manifested some righteous indignation, right? And the moment he walked in, what he saw was the very thing that he dealt with in heaven because Lucifer... You see, he was the anointed cherub that was before the throne. He was the closest angel to the throne of God. He was the cherub that covered the throne with his wings, and he was also the cherub that covered God's throne with worship. Music was coming out of him. Music was coming out of him. Why do you think music is such a powerful thing that the devil uses? Because that's he's anointed for that, but he's corrupted his music. He made music. He made music. But instead of worshiping the God on the throne, he wanted to sit on the throne. And then he was merchandising and trafficking in heaven. Well, what is trafficking? Moving of things from one place to another. Amen? What is merchandising? Exchanging. Buying and selling. Well, I mean, did they have money in heaven? Did they have goods that they were buying and selling? No. What was he doing? What was he merchandising and trafficking in heaven? Power. 
promising power to the other angels. More power than God had given to them. So he's promising them more power. If I get to sit on the throne, I'll give you more power. And he even deceived a third of the angels with his merchandising and trafficking in heaven. Promising them power. He was the original power broker. And so there was a power grab going on in heaven. That was the conspiracy. And God said, no, it will not be so. And he cast them out of heaven. And Jesus, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I mean, he was cast out just like that. The righteous indignation, the anger of God went boom. And the, pff, all these angels were pushed out just like that. And the same exact thing is what happens when he comes into the temple. He walks in. He sees the same exact thing. Boom. The same anger and indignation. The righteousness, righteous indignation of God is manifest. He starts overturning these tables physically because that was what he could do because now he's in, the human, he's in human flesh. And he's making whips and, and whipping him because he had seen this thing before in, in heaven. And he drove it out of the heavenly temple. And the earthly temple is supposed to be a representation of the heavenly temple. He walks into the heavenly temple. He sees the exact same thing. The devil just moved out of the heavenly temple, moved right into the earthly temple. And people let him do that. Why? Because the Pharisees loved money. You know that verse? Pharisees who loved money. So these money changers were a sect, a cabal. Do you understand me? And they were working with the Pharisees and they're working with the scribes and the governmental system and the religious system. So you have the money system, the government system, and the religious system working together. Trying to establish that one government, one money, and one religion there. Same exact thing. So that's what we're dealing with. The same thing is manifesting today. So the picture that we have there that what Jesus dealt with is the same exact picture of the structure that we're dealing with. Have you found um, Matthew 17 yet? Okay. Look at this. Verse 24. Amplified. When they arrived in Capernaum, the collectors of the half shekel, the temple tax, went up to Peter and said, Does not your teacher pay the half shekel? Okay. He answered yes. And when he came home, Jesus spoke to him about it first saying, What do you think, Simon, from whom the earthly rulers of the kings of the earth collect duties or tributes or taxes from? From their own sons or from others not of their own family? So, you know, just like the mafia has a family. The family. And we're dealing with this globalist cabal that is basically an, a tight-knit family. Do you understand me? And they don't rob from one another. They rob from the people. That's what it's about. Okay? And they have all their tax havens, and they don't pay taxes. Because the taxes are not there for them. The taxes are there for the people. Do you understand me? So, and what does Jesus say? So we are what? Exempt. <laughs> and then Peter said, from other people, not of their own family. Jesus said to him, then the sons are exempt. However, in order not to give offense and cause them to stumble. That is, look, this is the perfect definition. To cause them to judge unfavorably and unjustly. Because they would have judged them and they would have come after them. Go down to the sea and throw in a hook. Take the first fish that comes up. And when you open its mouth, you will find there a shekel. Take it and give it to them to pay the temple tax for me and for yourself. I want you to pay attention to what I'm sharing tonight because this is going to change your life. Please. I know it doesn't seem like a rah-rah message, but you need to hear this. Okay. Watch this. So, Jesus was not going to pay this tax, and he had not paid it. That's why they're coming after him. They have records. They're finding in Capernaum, hey, according to our records, the tax collectors are coming. <laughs> you understand me? These are different tax collectors. See, Matthew was a tax collector for the Romans. 
collecting taxes for the Romans from his own people. That's why he was so despised. Okay. But this, this, these are different tax collectors. These are the tax collectors who are collecting the tax for the money changers. You understand me? The banks. So they come in to collect this tax that is basically not in line with the law because Jesus would have fulfilled the law perfectly. He would not never be late in paying anything. Is that correct? But this is an illegal tax. But they would, be, they would have judged them unfavorably, unjustly. Now the temple tax is something that was established in Exodus chapter 30, verse 13. It was a tribute tax. And this is what everyone among you, those who are numbered, shall give. Half a shekel according to the shekel of the sanctuary. The half shekel shall be an offering to the Lord to be numbered. So at every census, any male that was 20 years old was to redeem his soul by a half shekel silver weight of, of silver. It was redemption money. At every census... Every male that was 20 years old. Well, this was not a census year when they're in Capernaum. Because they, they would not be in Capernaum if it was a census year. They would have to go to their own hometown to be counted. Just like Joseph and Mary, remember? They had to go to Bethlehem. That's where Jesus was born because it was a time of a census. This is not a census year. So basically, this was an illegal tax that they had put a heavy burden on the people to collect. And they're coming after them. And if you don't pay it, they'll take stuff from you. They'll take your land. They'll take your animals, whatever. They will take something from you, force you to pay it. And um, who had the half shekel silver coin? The temple coin. The money changers. The banks. So I want you to see the picture here. Jesus did not send Peter to the bank. He sent them fishing because Jesus did not operate by their system because that system is not a part of God's system. Jesus operated outside of the system. We here, we are in the world. We're not of the world. We are not to operate by the system, the mentality of the world. Do you understand me? In some countries now, look at how this is going. They said they, they shut down ATMs. Because people might get the virus from the keypad. Why are you shutting down the ATM? Why don't you put sanitizers there? Why don't you have somebody say, it's not about the virus. It's about the money. It's about control. It's about control. One of the first things they do, it's about restricting the money, controlling the money. People can't get in, can't get out, whatever. It's, that's what it's about, guys. It's about control. That's why we cannot cave in to the agenda because it comes in cloaked one way, but it really is about something else. And if we give in and cave in, we just become slaves. We come under the domination of a system. Even though you're not taking the mark, in a sense, you are taking the mark. Because before they took the mark, they first worshiped the image. That's, there's a progressive thing that happens. I am not worshiping no image, and I'm not taking no mark. And nobody's putting a vaccine in me. What if they kill you? Well, you know what? Just go ahead and pull the trigger. I'll go quickly. I take the vaccine. I'm going to suffer. I ain't suffering. We have to be... I mean, uh, look, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm going to have to be very open with you guys. I'm not, I cannot sugarcoat this thing. But this is the end days, end of days, guys. We're headed towards the rise of the Antichrist. But thank God, we are going to be raptured. I believe in the rapture of the church. We're not appointed unto wrath. We're not going to go through the tribulation. We're not going through the tribulation. So, But we're going to have some tribulation before the tribulation. The birth pains leading up to the tribulation. That's what this is. We've had multiple birth pains. 
And in some countries, it's, the birth pains are pretty strong. Here, we haven't really experienced much. Americans have been pretty much shielded from a lot of it because, well, the blessing of God's on this nation. And people don't understand how blessed this nation is, and they're complaining about it. And they want socialism because they were brainwashed. Oh, you want socialism? Go to the grocery store. Look at the empty, empty shelves. You don't like that? You're not going to like socialism. I had to wake up 6 o'clock yesterday morning, go wait in line 45 minutes at Target to get one, one package of toilet paper. And somebody handed it to me. That was all like, and I was taking flashback when I was 10 years old and I lived under martial law in Turkey where we had rations. And my dad could only go once a week to get five gallons of gas. Then he had to go wait in line at a government office to get a ticket to get the gas. I was like, man, I remember those days. That's why we left, came to America. I lived under martial law, curfews, checkpoints everywhere, soldiers with machine guns. As a kid, nine, ten years old, I remember being scared, seeing the, daddy, daddy, what's going on? It's okay, son, come on, we're going to just go through a checkpoint. They're going to mark our name on a list and things like that. You know, it was a lot, I mean, I'm talking about 1980, so I mean, everything was paper-based. You can get away with a lot of things. Now you can't. Everything's digital. Everything's tied in. You can't fake your way out of stuff. You can't have fake papers. They got thumbprint recognition, eyes, DNA is the next thing they want. Do not send your DNA to one of those stupid things to find out your heritage. It's about collecting your DNA. Do not do that. They're DNA banks collecting your DNA. Do not do it. If you've already done it, Pray that the thing would be lost or something. Do not send your DNA to find what country you're from. I can tell you what country you're from. You're from the kingdom of heaven. That settles it. That's your heritage. That's your family. You've been called by the Father's name. Glory to God. So I, people trying to find, I'm 1% I'm Jewish, I'm 5% Irish. Who cares? Who cares? It, now you got all these Christians trying to find some kind of Jewish DNA. Why? Your DNA is not Jewish, Turkish, Irish, Native American. You're not Pocahontas. Forget about all that stuff. I can tell you, your DNA, you are a new creation in Christ. All things have passed away. Behold, all things are made new. Your DNA comes from heaven. You got the Holy Ghost on the inside of you. You got the blood of Jesus. That's your DNA. You got the Father's DNA in you. You're of your Father. Your Heavenly Father. It's all of the flesh. It's all of the natural. Your DNA comes from heaven. It was burned into you by the Holy Ghost fire. You're branded and sealed by the Holy Ghost. You've already been marked. You don't need to be marked. You've already been marked. You don't belong to yourself. You belong to him who purchased you, paid a price for you. You're marked by the blood of Jesus. You're sealed by the Holy Ghost. If you don't understand that, you'll take another mark to survive. Just to buy and sell the mark of the beast. For the ability to survive. And that's what the last days will be about survival. We're not here for survival. We're here for revival. You're not going to just survive. You're going to thrive. I got news for you. This is not your crisis. Don't own it. Let the world have their crisis. I'm in the kingdom. I have supernatural provision. I don't have to go to the money changers. I hear, I got a word from God. Peter got a word from God. Go put down one hook. Everybody say one hook. One. Then he says, the first fish you catch, catch. Everyone say one fish. One. Open its mouth. You'll find one shekel. Everybody say one shekel. One. Half shekel for you, Peter. Half shekel for me. Says Jesus, go pay him. Get him off our back. It's not about the money. It's about the mission. 
The Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. I don't have time to deal with that. We need to win souls right now. More than ever before, people need to hear the gospel. There's no better time to preach the gospel than now when people are scared out of their minds. And they're face to face with death. Amen. And they need to hear the gospel. Because they have no hope. They're running scared. Walking on hazmat suits. Trash cans. People are wrapping trash cans on their feet and things like that. I mean, it's crazy. Aren't you afraid? No. What if you get infected? I will not get infected. I cannot get infected. I've been endued with power from on high. I'm clothed with the anointing. I have an impenetrable shield about me. And I have the shield of faith to defend myself against the fire darts of the evil one. And the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. The greater one lives on the inside of me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. A thousand will fall at my side. Ten thousand at my right hand. And none shall come near me. No evil shall befall on my dwelling place. I am not afraid of the pestilence and the plague. When the plagues came upon Egypt, there were no plagues in Goshen where God's people were. The plague shall be stayed off of you. You're sealed by the Holy Ghost. Nothing can penetrate. The only way it'll come in is if you allow it out of fear and ignorance. But you know the word because I teach you the word. You know who you are in Christ. Because you dwell in the secret place of the Most High. You abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. He is my shield. The name of the Lord is a strong and a mighty tower. And I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. And I run into it and I am safe. I am safe. You want safe place? Run into the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus. That's your safe place. Hallelujah. So we either believe the word or we don't. These, these, the days of playing with the word are over here in America. Popcorn, cotton candy, over. You better get the meat of God's word. You're going to have to get in the word. You're going to have to get under the fire. You're going to have to get under the spout where the glory comes out. You're going to have to get in the anointing. The anointing is no longer an option. It is a necessity. You protect the anointing, the anointing will protect you. Hallelujah. So this illegal tax is put on Jesus and Peter as a heavy yoke. And he casts it off. And he gives Peter a supernatural strategy for supernatural provision. Everyone say supernatural provision. I would say finding a shekel in a fish's mouth is supernatural provision. Amen. Do you believe that God can provide for you supernaturally in these days? Absolutely. You have no choice but to. Now you have to. Now you have to. People didn't have to in before because they trusted in horses and chariots. But now we trust in the name of the Lord our God. We have no other choice. He, we, we serve a God who owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He said, the silver is mine, the gold is mine. He said, I'll shake all nations. I'll shake the, one, one more time, I'll shake the heavens and the earth. I'll shake all nations. And the desire and the treasure and the wealth basically of the nations shall come in. Come in where? Come into my temple where I've released my glory. The glory of the latter house shall be greater than the glory of the former house. What is the latter house? You are the latter house. You are the house of God. You are the temple of the living God. The glory of God is on the inside of you. Hallelujah. When the glory filled the tabernacle, the Bible says Moses could not enter in. When you're filled with the glory of God, no virus can enter in. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When the glory filled the temple, the Bible says the, 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 the priest could not even stand to function. Hallelujah. We better understand what the glory of God is. 
But that's the problem because the church has not has discredited the power of God. They had a form of godliness denying the power. Now they realize they don't have power, so they have to shut down. Because they've been operating in the natural by the fear of man, so now they're in fear, they're going to close down. Yeah, I'm calling them out. You calling them out? Yes, I am. Somebody has to. Hallelujah. So we have to, we have to press into the anointing and the, uh, have to allow the anointing to press into us. So one of the things that you're going to have to know and understand and believe and operate by faith in, is in the area of provision in these final days. Supernatural provision for God's people. He provided food for Elijah, sent an angel, fed him. Amen. Sent him ravens to feed him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He multiplied the, the fish, the five loaves and the two fish, fed 5,000 families. He multiplied the oil that just kept flowing and flowing and flowing and got the widow woman out of debt because they were gonna about to come take the sons for, the, for her debt. They were about to put the sons into slave labor because of the debt. Supernatural provision. We either believe the word or we don't. You can't pick and choose anymore. You're either all in or you're, you're not. Because you're going to have to. You're going to have to walk through these things. We're going to have to believe God for the supernatural provision. And that God will still give you a strategy. Even when the system is locked down, God can still give you strategies. Because let me tell you right now, money did not evaporate. It's still out there. It's just been made inaccessible to a certain amount of people. And it's transferring from one to another. But part of the shaking is going to be the wealth of the wicked is going to be transferred into the hands of the righteous. You're going to have to operate by faith, not fear. You're going to have to believe God for supernatural provision. Peter experienced supernatural provision. He was a fisherman. He never used a hook. He used nets. You don't succeed as a fisherman with one hook. You have to put down a net and go through the whole lake just trying to find fish. And one time he went out and he caught nothing. Came back, was cleaning the weeds out of his net. Jesus said, let, let me borrow your boat. Then he used Peter's boat to speak to those in the shore. So Peter's boat basically became the stage and the sound system to, for preaching the gospel. And then he says, launch out to the deep. Put down your nets. Lord, are you kidding me? We were here all night at the right time because you go out fishing at nighttime. You don't go, go out fishing during the day. Put down your nets. Lord, you know, this is the wrong time, wrong lake. But at your word, at your word, Lord, I'll put down my nets. And I tell you, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, there, were, there was fish in that lake. I don't know where they came from. It doesn't matter. Hallelujah. But God, those fish were rushing into that net. They were basically... Racing one another, I'm getting in there first. And all that fish came out of nowhere and filled that net, and the net was about to break, and the boat was about to sink, and there was so much overflow they had to call their partners. Now, how do you go from toiling all night and catching nothing and being discouraged and cleaning the nasty seaweed out of your nets and just being frustrated? And you haven't succeeded at the right time. Now it's the wrong time. And now you have this supernatural provision. Because one word. One word from God. Lunch out to the deep. Put down your nets. One word from God. Take one hook. Catch one fish. You'll find one shekel. Which is worth three denarii. So three days of labor with just one little fish. I'd say that's supernatural acceleration. I say that's supernatural provision. And it's going to come to God's people. And we're going to step into a realm of the supernatural like never before. It's in times like this, when you're tested, you have an opportunity to test the word. When everything's in abundance, maybe you don't necessarily 
have a f- need to do that. But, you know, when you really need to press in, you need to press in. Hallelujah. And people that have got a hold of this word have seen supernatural things happen. Hallelujah. You want to, you, I mean, you know how corrupt the system is. Look at how corrupt the system was in the time of Jesus. After he overturned the money changers' tables, they took 30 pieces of silver, basically 30 shekels from the temple treasury, bribed Judas to turn them in. You know what 30 shekels is? According to Exodus 21, 32, it's the price of a slave. So Jesus was sold as a slave for you and I so we can never experience slavery. That's why I am so against because we think that there is no slavery. We think that we don't have slavery in America. You know how much there's more slavery today than ever before, honestly. Human trafficking is at an all-time high right now. It is, it is a trillion-dollar business, human trafficking. I mean, no. I mean, here in America, it's happening everywhere. We had 5 million of these people come through Turkey into European Union, and now they're coming, they're on the border. I mean, this is, it's just chaotic. The refugee crisis, and it was all basically created by wars. Because that's what these people do. They create wars. That's why Jesus said there'll be wars and rumors of wars. So there's different kinds of wars. You know, there's a war for your mind. There's a war for your body. That's what this virus is. It's a war for the, the, the mind and the body. Fear. There are different kinds. There's economic war. It's actually more of an economic war than anything else, really. It's about bankrupting the nations. It's locking down economies. We bind this thing in Jesus' name. I bind it. I bind it. And you know what? You're going to prosper and you're going to thrive even in the midst of a lockdown economy because you have supernatural provision. You have to trust the word of the Lord. You have to trust the word of the Lord. And you're going to need to pray like never before. You're going to have to get on your knees. You're going to have to pray in tongues like never before so God can give you divine strategies. Because what was that? It was basically a word of wisdom that Peter got from Jesus. Go. Put down one hook, one fish, and then one shekel. Now you're free. Now you're free from this debt. So you can get on your mission. Because I've called you to catch men. Amen. I've called you to be fishers of men. Hallelujah. And Peter was one of those that kind of had a tendency to forget, you know. (laughs) After the resurrection, Jesus comes and finds Peter doing what? Fishing. Peter, have you not learned? It's like after he fed the 5,000. Later on, they feed the 4,000. They've already seen this miracle. And now they're still struggling with it. Jesus is like, were you not there when I fed the 5,000? Now there's 4,000. It's even less people, but it doesn't matter. It's the same, same principle, same miracle. So... And so Jesus asked, will I find faith on the earth when I come back? You need to say, Lord, here here I am. You're going to find faith in me. You're going to find faith in me. Amen. I mean, you know, all the way to the end, I'm going to endure. I'm going to endure all the way to the end. Because through faith and patience and endurance, we inherit the promises. And, And I'll tell you what, the... Forget about inheriting some promises here on earth, some possessions. The greatest promise we have is heaven. And I'm not losing that for nothing on this earth. Like Smith Wigglesworth said, they can give me the whole world, put a gold fence around it, put my name on every fence. I will not exchange that for one drop of the anointing. So... That's how we need to live right now. We, need to, we have to have the anointing. We've been endued with power from on high. Clothed. Covered. That's your hazmat suit. Amen. Hallelujah. We walk in the anointing. We walk in the anointing. We walk in the supernatural. We are a supernatural people. Hallelujah. We may be flesh and blood... On the outside, but on the inside, we're different. We're a peculiar people. 
We have the life of God on the inside of us. We have the divine nature. We have God's righteousness. We have God's divine ability in the Holy Ghost. The all-seeing one, the all-knowing one, the all-powerful one is on the inside of us to lead and to guide us. We have an anointing that abides in us. We know all truth. Hallelujah. We're a peculiar people. We are a royal priesthood, a holy nation. We're God's kings and priests on this earth. And the church has to realize it's time for the church to be the church. And when you understand your authority in Christ, that you've been given dominion over the power of the devil, that in his name you cast out demons, speak with new tongues, lay hands on the sick and they recover. I don't know, laying hands on the sick is not social distancing. You're going to have to get pretty close, at least close enough to reach out and touch him. You know, because this is the agenda is to separate people and isolate people and put them in fear and captivity. That's the agenda of the Antichrist system. And then people will do anything for survival. That's what we're dealing with. We are under attack. This is war. This is wartime. This is not peacetime. And the church has been operating like it's been peacetime. And as soon as the wartime came, didn't know what to do. But we've always operated like it's wartime. From day one, we came here to take territory. Jesus said, occupy till I come. Hallelujah. When you have to show Hollywood movies to get people in church, you're in trouble. And when you get smacked up the side of the head, you don't know what to do. I'm sorry, I'm going to call him out. I'm going to call him out. You're showing movies that have demon-possessed people playing roles and parts. You're in trouble. You better get the anointing in your church. You bring Hollywood in, you're in trouble. You bring Disney in, you're in trouble. You don't bring the anointing in, you're not doing anything for the people. You'll keep him. You'll keep him on, in sunshiny days, but when they go and get stuff, they don't know what to do. Because you got to put substance in the people. You got to put fire in the people. You got to put faith in the people. You got to put the word in the people. You got to sow the word. You got to sow the word. You got to sow the word. You got to give them a foundation. They got people have to know how to hear the voice of God. They don't know how to hear the voice of God. They're going to listen to information and they're going to come under fear and deception. They don't know how to get revelation. They don't know how to get on their face. They don't know how to pray in tongues. Because you've cut tongues out because it's offensive to the religious. I'm going to smack this thing. Because I didn't come to Florida to play golf. God sent me on an assignment. Hallelujah. So we need voices. And God's raising you up to be a voice. Somebody has to be an oracle of God. You are an oracle of God. He's made your tongue as the pen of a ready writer. You're going to speak God's word. Hallelujah. You're not going to speak what you hear. You're not going to speak what the news tells you. You're going to speak God's word. Hallelujah. Somebody sent me a TED talk, what you can learn in, from fear. I have nothing to learn from fear. Don't send me some stupid TED talk. I've got the word of God. I'm going to speak God's word. I don't speak fear. I don't learn from fear. Fear doesn't teach. Faith is what teaches. So, but that's the problem. When the church is no different than a TED talk. Hallelujah. I'm going to smack this thing, man. I'm telling you right now, something come on me. Hallelujah. 
Shabara Kamara Sete Rianda Borokosa Tabaranda Rietza Pacate Baranda Shababa Barrie Garbos Brianda Baca Seteri Alabos Sontolobo. What is he saying? I, I, I ran out of words in English to smack it, so I have to smack it in the Holy Ghost. Because I'm not taking no chip, no vaccine, no mark, not bowing my knee to some money changers, sucking up to some system to survive. Hallelujah. Well, what, if, what if I'm the only one? Elijah felt like that. God said, no, you know what? There's 7,000 others that haven't bowed their knees. And then he went to mock him. Mock him. He mocked the prophets of Baal who had ate at Jezebel's table. We got too many prophets, too many prophets eating at Jezebel's table. That's why they don't speak the word of the Lord. You know you're speaking the word of the Lord when you have to go hide by the brook Cherith because they're coming after you. When you have to go hide by the brook Cherith instead of being invited to, to a prophetic conference of Baal, to be the guest speaker, the keynote speaker at Baal's conference, but you have to go hide by the brook Cherith, you know you've spoken the word of the Lord. We have 850 prophets coming. Would you be the keynote speaker, Elijah? Um, I'm going to call down fire on this thing. Something come on me tonight. My Lord, Woo. something come on me. <laughs> this is the day and the hour for the bold church, the Holy Ghost church to shine forth and arise. And we have to demonstrate the gospel. Demonstrate the power of the gospel, walking in the middle of this thing. They took Jesus, wanted to throw him off of a cliff. Because he said he was anointed and he walked right through it. So you're going to walk right through this thing because of the anointing that's on you. Because the anointing is on you, you're going to walk right through this thing. You're not being thrown off of no cliff. This is not your end. This is your beginning. <laughs>